It is a pleasant good morning to you. Nice weather outside, nice day, nice. Uh, you get up and you're not pushing up the daisies, you're looking down at them, you're doing good. Welcome to Brunch from 107.7. I am Ronnie Bishop and my co-host. Charmaine Babulal, good morning. And as always, good morning to you. We are happy to have you here. Uh, whatever is on your mind, kind of topics on the top of your head is what we talk about and we look at different angles on stories that you have not uh, been looking at. Uh, hopefully we can bring some elucidation to you. A wonderful slate line up for today, Charmin. First off, although she's waiting on the phone, is Akila Molan, and we've hoped to have um, head of the Central Division, Johnny Abraham Bishop. Yes, we're hoping to have Mr. Abraham here. He made a promise to the folks down there, little gang warfare. They say he may have his fingers on the trigger, on the tip of things is better, better framed, and he will share it with us if we're fortunate to have him. After that, we go across to the Congress of the People, PRO, to have a discussion as to what's happening with them in this election year. And we are not finished yet, Charmaine. Uh, we close off with uh, Minister of Work, Suraj Vambacha, and we managed to get someone from the People's Partnership onto the program finally. So he has agreed to be with us via phone at 11.30 this morning. So you've got a full slate happening for us this morning. Let us get started by welcoming our first guest. I was very happy to hear that uh, after what happened, and Charmin will detail it for you, after what happened, she went out there playing and they scored a 1-1 one, one, um, draw game. Now that mentality must be a very strong, motivated one to go out after such an incident and achieve what she did. Good morning, Akila Molan, who's on the phone waiting for us. Akila, as we would well know if you see her photo, is a national midfielder captain of Rush in the newly minted Women's Premier League. And um, she managed to escape with her life, uh, innocent victim of a shootout in Central Trinidad earlier this week. Akila, we let you tell your story. Good morning. Hi, morning, morning. Good morning to you. How, how are you this morning? Uh, much better. We played our second game last night and we won 3-0. 3-0, so, it's 3-0, so you, you had it over Aaron King, didn't you? Yeah, I had it. As, you, as you're here, can you tell us the score? Bef- um, the, who scored the goals before we head on? Um, uh, like one was our own goal in the 85 minutes, and two goals were scored by our forward from Venezuela, Christina. Okay, and that's Christina's second game only, also because she, they came in last week. They came in on Wednesday, didn't they? Yes, they did. Yeah, they did. came in on Wednesday, and already she's pumping. Well, thank you very much. That's good news, but we go back to the. Um, unfortunate news of the week, Mr. Bishop. Yes, well, we get into a situation where you were in the right place. I always see people in the right place. You were going about your business. Something happened and you uh, found yourself in the middle of the crossfire. Thank goodness it was not directed at you, is what we have found, but it's uh, something going on in the area. Make clear to our listeners what that experience and your best understanding as to what uh, caused it. Um, well, I was returning home from training around like a little after nine and I was playing music really loud in the car and just, you know, just jamming out. And as I had my car idling in the road, uh, I pushed the gate because I usually reverse in. And so on mornings I have to leave really early for work so I can just have easy access out. And um, I push the gate and then I just heard just rapid fire. So as I dive in towards the direction of the door, uh, my mom opened the door at the same time. Like the same time, I, I, I can't describe how her timing was just whoa. And then she just pulled me and we both, we both scampered backwards into the door and we both dropped to the ground. Mm-hmm. And she had her hands over me and I just reached the door, locked the door. And we just laid there for a long time and as we hear shuts this went one after the other very, very loud. Um, we would he- I would hear him running in the road, and the shots get louder and louder because obviously they were coming closer and closer. Mm-hmm. So um, it was a good 25 to 30 minutes we were on the ground. And after a while, I, I saw, um, when I got up and looked through the window, I saw a lot of police with their guns around the car, and they said, we retrieved the car, retrieved the car. And I shouted, no, that's my car. And he was like, oh, Mom, um, this is your car, come outside. So as I go outside, he was like, you sure this is your car? I was like, yeah, mm-hmm. my name is on it. Um, he said, um, and you're alive? I said, yeah, because I didn't make it back into the mm-hmm. car because mm-hmm. I already had died. So about five seconds I, was, I would have been in the car and um, God forbid. 
That story you just heard been is being relayed by National Football on our guest, Akila Mal, an unfortunate situation uh, that she happened to be in the middle of, Sharon. Akila, you live next to a mosque, and there has been, um, they have been reported, there were two things playing in the news that, that day, that um, there was a shooting at the home of, of uh, Police Corporal Anthony Burns, who lives on Lamont Street in Londonville as well, and there also that the, your home is located next to a mosque, and that the mosque was under attack. Did you, um, and, and earlier in the report when we spoke, you said that you heard people running and stuff. In what direction did you, what did you get a sense out of this? And you can tell us as much as you can without endangering yourself, of course. Um, to, to tell you the truth, I have never been in a situation like that. So, like I said, I, I don't know, like, where, in what direction or anything, but, um, or where the footprint, um, foot noises are coming from, but um, it was it was so it was so loud. It was so loud. The shots were so loud, and there were so many that I was in a disarray because the shots seemed so close. I almost mm. thought like my house was going to be a, like sh- you know shut up. So I was just in a in a state of like this disarray on the ground there, you know, because I've never really. I shouldn't say never really. I've never experienced such a harm. And I hope that you never have to do it again. I do want to ask you, however, going on to play a game after this meant that you were able to distinguish that it was you were not the target, but just happened to be in, in you know in the spot at the time this happened. So did that? I, I'm sure that helped you in divorcing um, what happened from the attention and focus you had to put in the game. Well, actually, um, I'm not. I'm very spiritual, and for me, when I was in Sweden last year, um, I had a, another traumatic um, experience in terms I lost my sister. She just gave birth, to it. and my nephew made it, but she didn't, you know, she died mm. at the hospital. Um, and I was so far away, and I had to, to muster the strength because she knew how I worked to go outside there, and mm-hmm. I had that, that faith and that strength from when I lost her, and she was just 27, so... Um, dealing with that and then having to deal with that then till now I know having to deal with this experience I think sometimes some of the things you go through kind of develop the character yeah, mm-hmm. to you after the day so I think although my sister is not here today which is really sad it, just dealing with that experience kind of prepare me better to deal with this one emotionally because you know I had I, I am able to be here today and I got to show that, hey, I am here today for a reason. So, And I was meant to be at that game. And even though she wasn't meant to be here today, I was meant to be here today. So I had to go there and, and then show that I was meant to be on that field. Very nice. And, and we saw you play that evening. You managed to hold back a draw <clears throat> against the Oilers with Karen Forbes coming at you all the time. Yeah, your, your yes. national colleague, Karen Forbes. Can we, Um, you were in Sweden um, you spent a number of years in Sweden playing and stuff, Akila, but you never um, left your roots. And you, we know, would have been working with children in the crime-ridden areas in Enterprise and to some extent Londonville. Can you tell us about that? And and how did this incident, because you're working to help and then you become yeah. a victim of crime. Can you, how this did, year that I was thinking, this mm-hmm. year, this, well, not the other year, but just like yesterday, I was thinking the same thing. You know, I'm like, you're giving your services you know, to in a positive way. And like I said, with my experience, I could have gone a lot of different places to to try to apply my trade in terms of giving back coaching-wise. But I choose to do it in a community that needs a positive role model, the positive influence. And here it is, you become a target. Mm-hmm. Um, or got caught up in, you know, like just me and my cousin were talking yesterday and we were saying amongst ourselves that, I mean... If things had gone differently, I mean, your life could have taken away from us. Hmm. So, so in, like, so innocent. Hmm. And you try to live your life in such a way that you give back and in a positive way. So I'm working with those kids. Um, it wouldn't deter me at all because I know at the end of the day, my glory is, is not of one of the eight, you know. And God will continue to see where the heart is. And he will bless me even if it's not in this lifetime, but in the next one. So for me, I'll continue to do it because at the end of the day, it's, it's what he placed inside of me. So these, that's just all I said. 
the spiritual grounding is clearly what um, has you in the position you are. You are a sports psychologist with the Ministry of Sports. You're working with under uh, uh, disadvantaged youths in the Enterprise Londonville area. There is what we're looking at right now, this increase in crime in Central. And wherever you have the scourge of drugs, you have what is like a gravitational pull to youth and the unemployed. You working with them, that pull must be very difficult. How are you able to show them an alternative way to go with all that's around them, particularly begging them to come and participate? Participate in what is called easy money. True, true, um, true. Because um, even though I'm working with them, a lot of them um, come with a lot of um, attitude. Obviously, a lot of um, you know their behavior is, is one of it has has its challenges because you talk to them more than you are able to coach. But I think for me, what I'm, I was able to show them is that um, you need to show. Um, other areas in Trinidad that positive can come out of here. For me, I kind of stress on that with them is that they should not be a statistic. And a lot of people are looking at, you know, enterprise, maybe now land novel as areas where, you know, people who want to venture into, oh, it's a tough area, you know, nothing good maybe isn't there. But um, I try to show them that, um, they need to be able to be a difference. And for me, I remember when I went to the national team, I don't want to lie to you, I remember, you know, hearing the talk that nothing good ever came out of Central Mean and Sporting Wise. You know, um, nothing south of the, um, nothing um, across the Carney, Carney Bridge, you know. Mm -hmm. And for me, that kind of motivated me younger, when I was younger, to really show them that, hey, Central do have talent. So I tried to show them that, that they have someone in front of them that actually had that experience and came out and, and pushed you to show them, hey, that good do come out from areas like this. So for me, I kind of dwell on that with them, that they need not to give people excuses or give people more reasons to talk, you know, and just, just go there when we go play games and, and this and that, show them that, hey, these areas do have talented youths and they need to, you know, to look at, look at these areas more. Okay, Akilo, uh, when you meet, um, we want to get to the, the, the root of it because we, we haven't really had anybody who's worked with the youth apart from Corporal Shabadi from the Police Youth Club explain to us their experience of working with them. So earlier you said that you found, you know, they, have, they come with an attitude. What are oh, you yeah. dealing with? You know, like, what do you see then? You come f obviously come from a home where parenting is a serious thing. So what do you see are the defects or the defaults or what, what they come with? What do you see that we as a wider community have to work with when because from you you only have them for a couple hours on the afternoon training them True. with football yeah so True. what 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 do you see that the wider community has to work with because sometimes the issues that these children have are not even recognized at the level of schools or elsewhere that's a good um great great point uh you have a good question because that was the one thing that i i looked at when i was there try to pick up because like like you mentioned yes i studied psychology so i try to tap into their their minds and their emotions i think one of the things is um a lot of them will have guidance and a lot of them on a daily basis are hungry in terms of they have no one to supply their daily needs you know mm. a neighbor might give them something to eat or so therefore who's feeding them they're gonna really and truly be a slave to you know and a lot of them are not getting what they need at home so they're going on the block and they're getting it. So what I observe, ob observe being around them is that they gravitate to who's taking care of them, who's showing them the love. And the love that they're receiving on the block, they think that's the ideal love because they're teaching them a different form of loyalty on the block. So I think um, it's a breakdown in the home. It starts there and the parents not really being there. You know, some of them go work and these kids are unsupervised all day. So it, it's, it, it, they come with an attitude because on the block they're learning a different lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So when you come down trying to implement or install in them a different value system, it's hard because as she rightfully said, I only have them maybe two or three or four hours within the afternoon, but sometimes some of them don't even go to school, you know? So, and so the, from eight o'clock to the evening, they're on the block. So, they have a lot of time for their minds to be to be polluted with this negativity that's associated with areas like such. 
national footballer uh, Kila Malon is our guest here this morning for his hour of brunch. And you mentioned earlier the disconnect at home with the parents. So I would assume that a lot of them of, of a young age would come from uh, parents who are not much uh, far removed from your age. Do you uh, do uh, discussions, counseling um, with, the, with the parents to see if, you, if that angle, I know it is not under your portfolio, but I mean, is that something you do as a way to reach them or you think when they come to you they're too far gone removed with the baggage of the home that it makes no sense to meet with the parents um no i i don't i don't i would never i would never um believe that uh any young person will be too far gone because then i wouldn't then i'll be wasting my time being Indeed. on a field on the field there so for me um i try to reach out to them and i work with um nicholas Gaffet. He's the guy that won the FIFA um, FIFA um, contest that they had throughout the world for so, um, those working with kids in those tough areas. So, they, um, so I work along with him, with these kids. And I think what we try to do is um, really, I mean, the, t- the team goes to Canada, to England. This year they're going to Disney um, from July. You know, just try to show them that the life outside it, is 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 waiting for them, you know, and I think that's that's what we're giving them. Um, and I think for them, when I when they come to the fields, I I talk to them for hours. You know, anytime they try to misbehave, I say, hey, you know what? We don't need to be playing football. I think you all need to come hear some of my stories. <laughs> and as soon as I say that, they say, no, 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 no. I say, yes, let's come hear some of my stories. <laughs> and I'll tell them these stories, and you know, and they look forward to it. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think those kids in those areas are being honest, yeah. All they need is love. In, in that Savannah, we have, like, I don't want a kid, like, 40 to, to, to 40 to about 60 of them on the afternoon. And every day they want training. Because, like I said, if we continue to show them consistently what they need to see in a positive way, mm-hmm. they're going to gravitate towards that. And every day they want to train. Every day. Some of them not even want to lead the football field. So these kids are actually crying out for that support, and I think mm-hmm. that we are not giving back to these youth and them in a positive way, and I think they are neglected. One of the things I, I share with my um, parents is that one thing that helped me a lot growing up was the community centers, and I haven't seen those community centers active, where these kids and we go and learn how to, you know, do craft or, or learn different things, and for me, Lanneville Community Center was where I spend a lot of my time. Mm-hmm. Learning how to play pan, learning craft, learning um, there's different things the community offer. And I haven't seen no community centers around where these kids and them could, instead of being on the block, they could go and learn different things and, and kind of empower themselves. And I think we need to empower them. I, I really do. Yeah. Because we have enough, we have enough um, qualifier of people who've been around to go back into these communities, why I don't think we are using these individuals with benefit. To the um, to are we, um, would you speak that on a national level? Because if you're a sports psychologist with the Ministry of Sport, you would know how many would be needed out there. Because a sports psychologist is now a very important factor. It's not just teaching them the skill. Um, or looking at who has a talent on the field, but this, the psychology part of it is very important. So do you see that, like within the ministry, not that we're ask you, asking you to put a negative light on the job situation, but indeed, do you see that more is needed? Oh, yeah, so much more. I mean, sometimes I say sometimes when, you, when you're up there, you don't see it as much as if you're really down doing grassroots. That's why I always believe in grassroots, because that's where you see where the real source is, and I think um, it's needed. I think I, I think psychologists in school is needed. Counseling in school is needed. It's it's certainly 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 um, needed. I think um, more more opportunity is certainly um, needed for these youth and them. And they want it. Like you just have to come a day and, and experience them, and you'll see how how, how they lit, how they lit up and. They see people are actually interested in it. They they will they will open. From first they win they win open up that much. But the more they get used to it, is the more they open up. 
anymore I could see like these kids are not truly young we really need opportunities and people to to show them that they are they are loved and they are appreciated but it's only if you're around them you'll truly understand that all these kids need is is, is some guiding hands they really do you are a sports really do. You are a sports psychologist in the Ministry of Sports. Is this a kind of conversation that is held among your colleagues in the ministry, understanding no. the, the dire need here? Well, currently, that's not my portfolio in the Ministry of Sports. I was a sports psychologist assistant at the sports company. I see. But I'm um, currently okay. in Ministry of Sports. I'm Thank one you. of those ADUs. Yeah, so. You're one um, of the what at the Ministry of Sports? The ADUs. Athlete Development Officer. Okay, okay. And wh so where does that job take you in terms of uh, nationally? Where does it take you outside of Londonville? And, and what do you do? Uh, it, it, it takes us into um, schools, targeting schools, where we have developed those athletes within the school system, but mostly primary school setting. Um, one of the main objectives, or well not objective, but ideas, is that um, the next school Olympian is in the school system. Yep. So, but um, does it mean okay. that you're looking, sorry, I don't mean to cut you, but does it mean that you're looking for physical talent or are you able to, <clears throat> is, is, are, they, are there programs or is it structured in a way that you can impart what you know is needed out there? Well, um, actually, it's a, it's a title, the job description, and it's, it's fairly new to the, the miniature sport. So the implementation phase is, is currently it was taking place. So as they start to develop the, the title more, um, you'll see more ADOs going into the school and actually working with the athletes themselves. So therefore There's you... more about implementation phase. Are you are in a position to help to define what that should be. Yes. Based on, yeah, right. your experience exactly. in yes. psychology and the physical, successful yes. and physical at sports. Bishop? It is yes. all about, uh, it's all about finding the solution. And I know that drop, job training is something that you're going to encounter as part of it. I mean, you start with the whole um, f extended family concept. I would hope that a couple of sponsors would step in to fill that area. But job training opportunities in the area, you mentioned that the community center is not open. And that is something I've asked um, myself. Uh, found surprising and disappointing is that we don't have a lot more of that. Are there yeah. community groups, however, that are willing to work along with you towards reaching these youths? Yeah, I mean, um, there are a lot of, and, and also too, it kind of, kind of help um, the community itself, the members, the older folks, uh, to get involved because they might have uh, someone in the neighborhood who's good at dancing, they might have someone who's mm -hmm. good at um, sewing, you know. So it kind of helps also to create employment, you know. And when when you see these older folks, feel like they also are part of it. It's also easier now for the whole filtration to take place of, mm -hmm. of bringing the community back together. So, of course, but first they have to see things being put into place to kind of overmark these centers. Because I always say to myself, I, I don't know why the communities don't have a lot more community centers engaged. Because... Mm -hmm. You know, this would um, kind of engage people more to be a part of it. I used to fall to the sports days in the community center where, you know, London where my camp against enterprise and this, but there's no more community atmosphere anymore. So that obviously, there is where the breakdown is also. But well, mm -hmm. at least this is what I am thinking, that um, because there's no more community spirit, you know. And if you look at football too, if you were to take the football back to the community, you'll see, wow. You see a different atmosphere. Mm -hmm. How is it now? Because really and truly, your community is, is what the style a lot of people too. You know, so if we get back the community vibes going, then I, I think we will see a more positive attitude coming out of different communities. But if there's a breakdown in the community, then it's harder to see things happening within the community because now we cannot truly identify what is taking place within a, another community. Now we can identify what is taking place in communities, guns, mm -hmm. violence, and stuff. But what are the, what are the other things that are supposed to be positive? Yes. You know, there's nothing coming out of it because there's nothing community-based, you know. I heard about, I, I mean, I read about community-based communities, but really and truly, is there any community program that is really hitting the community? It's hard to say, hey, we were bringing the communities together. And there's not. What is bringing the community together now is the guns. Hmm. And obviously we've seen it on the news and we're reading it on the newspaper. 
So I think more needs to be done with, we have a lot of gifted, talented people coming back from foreign. Why not give them opportunity to work into communities and, and that way more employment are created and the kids get a better opportunity to, to, to give back to mm-hmm. because now they, they're being um, occupied with something positive. And but if they left the one the whole day on the block, then that's what they're going to learn. Well, Kilo, and that's what they're going to pass on. I see, Kilo, I just want to um, enlighten Mr. Bishop here because I do think that I think you're too modest to say it. But when she's talking about community um, football, it's coming back. In your days, you would have remembered all those matches at games at the Savannah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Sunday morning thing. Right, yes. mm-hmm, that mm-hmm, pulled mm-hmm. the crowds and stuff. Yes, and we, we've games, had yes. the Pro League here in Trinidad the, um, and that has not attracted that kind of community mm-hmm. thing. The Women's mm-hmm. Premier League that has started recently because the, it's a family atmosphere. And I suppose you could tell us what happened at, at Palace Echo last night. Did you all pull a big crowd as well? Because you've been pulling crowds in the in the couple games that you all have had. Last night was amazing. I'm telling you, last night I came home and I was like, wow, this is... And I've played seven years outside. I played five years in college. And when I read Chita, yeah, that's why I made five. But, um, and that, all those can't even compare to that feeling I felt last night for the fact that it's within your country, you know, it's actually, you're outside of your feeling, yes, but to know that it can exist right here in your country, it's home, Mm. I mean, last night, I mean, I don't know, some people just have a vibe for sport, I mean, last night was just amazing, I mean, to see how they were into the football, and the crowd was, it was a nice crowd, and the two games were just entertaining, and it was real vibes on the last night. It was really good to see, and it was good to see people actually smiling and and and, mm-hmm. and, and enjoying something that yes. you know that they could celebrate that it's it's here, you know. Yes. So I think that yeah, we really need more of this, and I think that the WPL itself is, is speaking volume to how it's it's supposed to be done or how it should be done or continue to to carry on from here forward. Yeah. You all are a positive lot, and, and you're getting your just and, and due, yeah, you're getting your just and due rewards by bringing back that community spirit, and we hope that you continue. And may we add on the other positive side as well that, that your national captain, Mealy Atten Johnson, and then the, the woman who is your sports doctor as well on the national team, they've both um, opened their own foundation with the aim of helping young people mm-hmm. and helping disabled children as well. You know, so Akila, we'd like to thank you very, very much for sharing your time and experience with us this morning. And again, congratulate you on your win last night. And um, we know you'd like to, t- um, we also add that your mom, remarkably, the story, Bishop, that was told on the other side, this is Akila's story w- mm-hmm. from her mom, was that she woke up suddenly in the night and she realized Akila was not at home. And now that we've interviewed her, we understand that she lost her sister already. Mm-hmm. So the mother would have lost mm-hmm. her daughter. Mm-hmm. So therefore, she realized Akila was not at home, and she um she went. She said she got up, she couldn't sleep, and she perched herself next to the door, waiting for her to come home, mm. not expecting gunshots. So by the time the shot started, she was able yeah, to open, open the, the door, door quickly, yes. and pull her in. So that's uh, a heavenly, blessed story. Akila, thank you very, very much for sharing your time and your story with us yes, this indeed. morning. Yes, um, most of, and this is a little question. Um, my mom only has one daughter, which is me, my dad's daughter. Oh, yeah. okay then. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But um, so um, today, if, um, today um, the WPL players and the national team, will, so many players should be in action. They're in Krause ground. Today is the Special Olympics um, Foundation um, football tournament. So mm-hmm. come out there and, and support. Um, you'll be, the girls will be engaging in a fun day today. And as I said, the WPL is doing wonders for community um outreach right now and I think that's that's good. That's exactly what we need and even the special needs um have opportunity to to play today and, and, and play with us and have fun with us. So we'll be out there from two o'clock today. From many different levels we salute you and admire you. Thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. Keep on trucking as a national footballer, keep on trucking in your league and the work that you're doing in your community. We salute you for that too. All right then. Thanks and you guys have a great day. Same Thank day. you. You have a wonderful day. It is brunch we will